percentage of the square array. Oh, well, I have some more too. Oh. Have, okay, the professor can have some. Okay, this is the technical slide, so we'll move on. It was just to give you the title. Oops. Okay, and here's what we're gonna we will be working with as you have your sample model, the model help. And where did this this is what I've worked, this is an extension of my dissertation. So about I shouldn't mention how many years ago, but about ten years ago I was looking just about ready to start writing a dissertation project. And I wanted to do something with geometry, but I had no clue what. And so my dissertation advisor and I were thinking maybe something with hyperbolic geometry. Geometry, since he basically does mathematical physics and did complex manifolds. But one, my mother is an elementary school teacher, and so one late August, we had to go in to clean out her room. So here is an example where housework leads to great mathematics, or good mathematics. So I was assigned the task of organizing the closet, her home closet, and I found these cubes. And I'm like, ooh, aren't these nifty? I said, could I have them? And she said, of course. What do you think? You're not going to answer? Yes. No, she said, absolutely not. I need all these cubes. I got to teach the two fifth graders how to do <laughs> tilings with these. So I don't give up. I wheedle and moan and groan. And so finally I got a little baggie about 15 cubes. So she finally said, I can't stand it. Take 15, 15 only. So I took them in and I said, I said to my advisor, oh, can we do something? Can we build? I thought we were going to build like neat like Rubik's Cube things originally. And he was looking at it and he said, yes, but we're going to start doing planar things and we're going to kind of relate it to what's called the transition matrix. So I didn't know this at the time. And so what he, we decided to do was we started just working flat in the plane. And we started counting what I call two-dimensional proper arrays. And now the idea behind this, even though you could, if you had enough cubes, you could build this picture, is the arrows are showing you how the connectors are plugging in. Okay? And what we did is we, for each connected subset, and that really does mean path connected, but it's something that would hold together when you stick all the arrows together, it's an intuitive notion of connected. We wanted every connected subset to reach the right hand edge, and we wanted anything extending out, here would be an arrow extending out, to only be at that one thing, or at one right hand edge. So in other words, when you hold the thing together on the right hand edge, it does nothing, nothing falls apart. And so and somehow all the information of its transition matrix state is reported here. Now I'm not going to get into a transition matrix, but important pertinent information you need for the thing to record a two-dimensional thing in terms of a series of letters and arrows is all there when you have these constraints. So it's a little bit like the diamond problem, but not quite. Yeah. yeah. It can be considered like a finite percolation. Everything that starts here must somehow end up over here. And I really only, because I want to basically record it as a column of letters. I don't want anything being able to escape upward or downward. It has to escape to the right, any arrows upward. And so the red set, the red arrows go with the letter A. The blue, I mean the green arrows go with B. And you see we have an escape B, escape B arrow here. That's why from an arrow will not B. Um, dark blue goes with the C. And the purple goes with the D. Now granted, there are many five by eight arrays that go with this state. But, I mean, when we count the matrix, it records how many. I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not getting into that, but that was the idea. Now, the interesting thing was when we did this, there was one open question in the dissertation. These main transition matrices, which got pretty big, when, when like for like five by five, they're 364 by 364. They all had palindromic polynomials, and the question was why? And then, my dissertation advisor said, oh, it has to be the dimensions. It's not going to happen when we go to three dimensions. You're going to find out that you're not going to get a palindromic polynomial. So for any M, and M by N? We don't know why. And in fact, but if any N by M, it's empirically got it up to like six or seven, and it's any N by M it seems to be palindromic. It's really nice. So do you have a proof now? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I haven't looked at that for a while. That's like the whole other computer aspect of this. I haven't. Oh, so it's a conjecture for M by N in mm -hmm. the plane like this? Yeah, and at that I conjecture it works. The palindromic nature works, in fact, for any dimension. These are 
great. So and you, you also tested it for Hubble. Yeah, I tested it for some small yeah. three-dimensional yeah. things. So this is one of the reasons I started to count these because I said I don't know if I believe that. I said let's count a two, uh, two by two by two. The three-dimensional yeah, yeah. And lo and behold, it was. And so that was probably one of the few times he was wrong. He said, no, I think you're right. I think this has nothing to do with the dimension. So, so, so what's the weight here? And the number of, so well, what do you mean polynomial, dynamic polynomial? Uh, I have so, a polynomial handout if you want to see it afterwards. So uh, it's a, a single number? So you have to, yes. weigh, so you have to weight it. Yeah. So you have a total number. It's a number, number of five mm -hmm. by eight, for example, or by eight. Mm -hmm. so, you assign a polynomial uh, to any m, m by n proper array. Yes. So what's the weight? Uh, only one variable polynomial? Yeah, 21 variable. And what's the weight? Well, I'll have to show you. I'm not okay. sure. I'm not sure. I know. So there is some natural way of assigning a weight. OK, you'll have yeah. to show it. No, 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 ask you. I don't know. You have to define it. Before you make a contractor, what's the definition of the polynomial? No, I didn't make a weight definition, but we, we factored. What we did was we ended up factoring it in maple. No, no, but what's the polynomial? Define the polynomial, please. What do you mean define the polynomial? I don't understand. I, you know, where are you getting a polynomial from this? Oh, all right. Yeah, you were asking matrix. me how to make a transition matrix from this. No, no, no. no. Uh, what's the polynomial? What's the x? The polynomial has to be a variable. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get my notes out. I mean, the context is I know not the way to find it. Yeah. Right now, you have an immigration problem. Count the number of n by n arrays. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you say that there's a polynomial assigned to n by n. The Yes. What is it? Wait, no, no. Q sub n, n of x. Yes, there's so a polynomial. Yeah, let me see if I can find that here. But I, I'll show you how to do it. Oh, you're not saying there's a certain way of assigning weights. Well, yeah, you basically assign, you, when you, you assign them, um, you assign, it's actually, I shouldn't say it's. It doesn't matter, that's a certain way. It's a certain, um, just the time, way. I don't want to get into this particular yeah. thing. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. All right, well, I can show yeah. you afterwards what I mean. I'm not, yeah. so maybe we can correlate the weights with that then, but... No, so I know, that's it. Yeah. It's in the way of assigning weight. Okay, so yeah. let's, we can talk about it afterwards. I mean, I can show you that I'm not sure what you mean by the weight. But don't, I mean, I didn't want to get too much into this. No, no, what's the point number? Can you define point number? Forget the weight. Yeah. So yeah. here's a build, and here's the matrix, and that's the polynomial. But how do you define point number? How do you define so uh, you take the characteristic polynomial of this matrix. Okay. That's it. So you made the transition it's matrix a, and you take the characteristic a, polynomial. Okay. I have a handout it. for it if you want I'm to see it. it. Okay, so that's what you were asking. Because you're going to need to find Yes. Oh, I thought I did so, I'm sorry. So characteristic have, polynomial okay. of the transition matrix. Wait. Let's do with weight. Yeah, it's the characteristic polynomial of the transition matrix. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Now okay. we're all on the same page. Yes. Okay. Wait. I <laughs> think. Okay. But the idea is he, he did a whole series of these for each m by n for each, basically the, the size of the matrix is only the number of letter, number of rows you have. So for so each these n. Are the states. Okay, so these are the states yeah. of a transition matrix. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. If you don't know transition matrix, don't worry about it. But the idea is there's a way to count these things with the matrix. And the nice, these matrices, the conjecture is they have a nice property that their characteristic polynomials are palindromic. We don't know why. My, we thought originally it had to do with that this was planar, but when we go into a three-dimensional case, they still are palindromic. Beautiful. Yeah, it, it, it's beautiful. We don't it's have still open. So oh, if you can prove it, you can explain why. It basically means it's time symmetric forward and backward. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. And so we had to, so anyhow. So that's how I got into doing the three-dimensional case, because I was nosy and I didn't believe him and he was wrong. So I was like, that be. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to build, work with the three-dimensional proper arrays. Okay, so what we're going to do is we basically are going to take an array and we're going to work from front to back. And instead of adding, before in the other picture, you would naively add column from, from left to right. You put a column, we'll start with a column, we'll tap another column, we'll tap another column, we'll tap another column. Well, we're just going to do this with planar faces back face, attack another face, and so on. And once again, we want all the information to be recorded in a particular or in a front face so it can be the state of a transition matrix. All right, so what we can't have, we can't have any connectors pointing out or to the side. All the connectors must point to out of the front face. That's why I call this five-way flat. And this thing fails because our white has 
a connector pointing upward. I couldn't record that. The other thing is all your components